relative. And so I start thinking about those things. Don't be much longer. I know you you guys missed out on this lab. But soon I won't be around. So with that, that's what's here. The next big thing would be the Wealth Tax Act. And the Wealth Tax Act, remember Huey Long's big tax? Well, Huey Roosevelt could say, hey, we're not doing Huey Long's 100% tax, but we are going to increase taxes on the very wealthy. This is a progressive income tax. And the big thing this does is you raise the rates for the very wealthy, and that raises wages. You think, how could it raise wages? Well, just imagine if you have a very, very high tax rate. If a company has really, or a person um, owns a company, and they pay themselves a big wage because, hey, we made a lot of money. But if 79% of that might be taxed away, or a good hunk of that would be taxed away, then they, oh, I don't want to lose it all the taxes. And so what they do is they put it back into the business. Very high marginal income taxes rates raises wages because it raises productivity. Productivity goes up. Productivity goes up. Remember productivity, that's how much one person can produce in a day. Because they'll invest into um, products. The highest increase in productivity in American history, meaning more than anything else, new technological devices, all the things to make us make produce more, that's the 50s and 60s, 1950s and 60s. Way higher than today. Everyone talks about robots replacing people. There's no sign of that. I'm not kidding. There's no sign. It's just more like a science fiction talk right now. It doesn't mean it won't happen. Soon our robot overlords will take over. But, and that tax rate was the highest tax rate at that time was 92%. So, next, the other thing it does this the wealth gap is reduced. The wealth gap goes down. The reason the wealth gap goes down, if you raise the highest rates, it makes it, uh, there's less money for those on the top to hold and create more wealth for themselves to basically accumulate wealth. And so that means they'll be less, they'll have less accumulated wealth, they'll pass on less accumulated wealth to their children, and that means other people have that wealth. It reduces the gap. And so, then I gotta quickly show you the rates. If you really understand it, you gotta see the fund of marginal income tax rates. My room. I'm gonna keep that till I retire. Huh? No, I'm just going to leave it, but the uh, janitors just left it there two years ago when they cleaned the rooms in the summer, and I just left it there thinking they'll take it someday. They've never taken it back, so I'm going to see how long it can last. I clearly lead a very exciting life. Okay, so. Let's go back to the first year of the Wealth Tax Act, 1936. These are the tax rates. They go all the way from the first $4,000, everybody pays 4%, and then anybody who makes incomes over $5 million is at 79%. Remember, Huey Long was at 100% for over a million. So this is like, hey, you want you want Huey Long tax or mine? And this really only hit one person. At this time, only one person was making over $5 million a year at that time, John D. Rockefeller. So that the John D. Rockefeller tax. But nobody pays this percentage. These are, and get this down, marginal income tax rates. Just like when I told you about, uh, about the payroll tax and the wealth tax, or the Huey Long's wealth tax. What it is is this. Everybody pays the same tax for the same dollar. This is the way taxes are done to this day. So everybody... Their first $4,000, the first $4,000 for everybody, they pay 4%. So if you make $4,000 a year at this time, you pay 4%. If you make $100 million, the first $4,000 of that $100 million is taxed at 4%. So to figure out that tax, you come up with a number. Then everybody's next $2,000, so $4,000 to $6,000. That's taxed at 8%. Come up, that's how much it is. Then the next 2,000 here, it's taxed at 9. 
the next 2,000 add 10. Let's come up with a little number and then add them all up. The math is much easier than that. We're doing the, there's a formula that's very easy. But that's the way marginal taxes work. All the way down. So let's say you make $10 million a year at this time. Only that $5 million over that would be taxed at 79%. Then the next, this is two million to five million, that three million will be taxed at 78, and so on. So everybody pays the same tax for the same dollar. So regardless of your income, your first 4,000 is taxed at zero. I'll show you what it is today, but that's that's zero I'm at four. That's the way it works. That's how taxes work today. And the reason they do this is to um, not discourage you from getting a raise. You know, if you thought, let's say it was 4% and then all your income would be taxed at 8 if you go up to this, you might be reluctant to take a raise, wouldn't you? This idea is, if you get a raise eat and go up to the next tax bracket, only, let's say you go up to the second tax bracket, only the money over $4,000 will be taxed at 80%. That is how marginal income taxes work. And what I just told you from the last poll I saw, Gallup put out a poll about people's knowledge about basic information. And I think it's funny because everyone complains about taxes, and yet 85% of the population did not know what marginal taxes were. Adults. And my guess is most of you, some of you might have known, but most of you probably did not, right? Nothing to be embarrassed about. But now you know. And that means that we're smarter and better than everyone else, right? Who's with me on that, right, right, right? Now, it is funny though, everyone complains about taxes and it doesn't know how they work. But the big thing is, and the big thing is, you know, people do work. They're busy, they have lives and families. You're not going to expect them to know every detail. But then, so people might say stuff because they hear the wrong thing and people don't know. But this is another example of those who do know and then mislead people to not explain the way marginal taxes are to make you think you're paying more. That's where it gets dangerous. That's what I'm talking about here. So I told you about marginal income tax rates. It's not that you have to know every day, even though this will be on the test. You have to reproduce this table. I think that's fair, right? Should we do 36 or 37? And so, oh, and so that's the big issue, is to know how they basically work and know that everyone pays the same tax for the same dollar. Everyone's first 4,000, and it works. I'll show you today's rates in a sec. And one more thing I should add. This is not hard. If you think that is complicated, what I did is actually a simple formula. Uh, state, Montana state taxes have the formula on there to have a different kind of progressive rates. When I first started doing our, uh, my taxes, you come up with your taxable income and say, so let's say I'm just throwing a number out of it, $40,000. And you go and you look, they just had a table, $40,000, there's my tax, boom, that's all it was. This is easy. The reason why there are accountants and CPAs, certified public accountants, and all the things in the tax laws is to figure out your income. Taxable income is the big thing. That is where you have all the tax laws to figure out what's taxable income. The IRS puts out the laws, they put them like phone books. And so that's phone book with the tax laws and they have all these different volumes. And so the 2018 tax law came out and I saw someone standing next to all the books stacked up and it was about a foot taller than them. And my guess is there are maybe 5'8", five 5'9", five and so that's a half foot taller than me. That's just the law stacked up. And almost all of our ways get deductions for mostly wealthy people to reduce their taxes. So that's the issue. So let me show you, when I told you the 50s, the, the, most, uh, the most productive time in American history, let's find 59. See the margin, highest marginal rate? What was five million equivalent to in 1959? Since it's taxing it. Well, this one goes now to uh, 200,000, but. Yeah. Um, well, incomes were a lot smaller then because of this tax rate. I mean, the biggest income, everybody else's wages were going up, but the very tip top were not near as big as it, not even close. But you multiply that by about 20, that's what it would be. There's been a lot of fortune. And so you want to see today real quick, just to get an idea. And there had been a 
big a big tax decrease in corporate taxes passed by uh, the Republican-controlled Congress in 2017, signed by President Trump. So this is the way it looked like. The table's not near as nice. It has single, married, married but separate um, returns, and then head houses just where one person's working. And this is the way taxes are today. Ten, so taking the single one, ten percent for the first about ninety-eight hundred. The highest rate is thirty-seven percent. Yeah. Isn't this what Reagan had to have in the eighties as well? Well, Reagan went down from seventy to fifty to twenty-eight. And is this conservative or liberal tax policies? Very, very conservative. Yes. They pay a lot less. The idea is to funnel money to the very wealthy. Remember, they would then spend it other ways. And one thing I should add, though, let's say most, uh, let's say you make twenty thousand dollars a year. I'm just throwing a number out. And then the door, twenty thousand dollars a year. There's a standard deduction of twenty-four thousand dollars. Yes. Yes. You need the. Three oh yeah. The, the what? Is this what you need? Okay, so you got three minutes, right? Uh -huh. Brainstorming thesis. You, you're more welcome to sit here or go outside. And so, there's a twenty-four thousand dollars standard deduction that everyone gets unless they want to like, deduct their charity and more the interest, all kinds of things. So you subtract that from your income. So if you make twenty-four thousand dollars a year, you subtract twenty-four thousand. What's your income? Zero. You pay no federal taxes. And beginning of World War II, they started withholding. You see your paycheck and all the things you withhold. Your employer does that. So they withhold income tax. And then what you're doing is when you figure out your income tax, you're figuring out your taxable income. You're figuring out your taxable income. And if you overpaid and withhold it, that's where you get a refund. That's what the refund is. If you overpay during the year. So like when I did my taxes for my wife and I stopped our taxes uh, about a month and a half ago. I did those and um, they figure out your tax bill and compare it to how much they Most, slightly over half people actually paid more in taxes than they did before. The day, uh, because the tax cut they passed in 2017 was geared towards very long. So those are marginal income taxes. Any questions? So if I just set up a table and give you a taxable income, you can do that to cost test. Good. All right. So please remember this about marginal income taxes. I'm not going to do that. Number, th the next big thing of the second new deal, the WPA. Everybody write down the WPA, the Works Progress Administration. And this, the Works Progress Administration. Come on, stop. So I'm showing a little bit more of that New York one, that's Mayor LaGuardia of New York. The Works Progress Administration both about realize that the, the PWA, the CWA, the CCC, the TVA weren't big enough. And this will be the biggest program. So the government is going to go into deficit spending and start building. And this program is so immense, it's hard to even, even really comprehend the size, even though it probably wasn't big enough to totally get out of the depression. But Listen to the number of roads and bridges they made. So get an idea of what they made. It's on Social and economic changes lay in Washington. After two years of emergency measures, Roosevelt created the Works Progress Administration and by presidential order forbade the agency to discriminate on any ground. This was one of the biggest things that happened because of the WPA. Georgia, even though Roosevelt could not um, get a civil rights act to get rid of Jim Crow laws, the government was segregated. And it was normal to not give jobs to, to blacks or certain jobs to Hispanics, or for that matter, based upon sex. This had no discrimination for any reason. So even though there would be a lot of sexual discrimination, they could not discriminate based upon race. And remember the grandfather's clause and those laws like that, that um, blacks could not vote in the South? Blacks who could vote got to the north or a few areas in the upper south they could vote. Blacks, about 60-40, voted for Republican. Why Republican? The party of Lincoln. Just 
This reversed it. Literally 180 of the 36 election because of the WPA. Blacks who could vote begin to vote 60 40 for Democrats. Because, yeah, there might be a bunch of segregation as Southern Democrats, but FDR and the Democratic Party did not discriminate based uh, for the WPA. So everyone got that. Everyone got that. That is a big shift that blacks started voting more for the Democratic Party because of the WPA. Yeah. Wasn't it like an African American legislature that legislator that like like made this a part of the WPA? Like like required. There was an argument that that was part of it. And it was an a minister a legislature from New a legislator from New York. They and the thing about it is this talks about New York, there was a bunch of, of basically um, race related conflicts because of this. And so that's where it came from. And but but Roosevelt did want this and he was but he was pushed. You know, pushed to do what he wanted to do. And then in the 1960s, when the Democratic Party became the party that was uh, for equal rights and Republicans opposed that, this switched the voting range even more. We're about 90 to 95 percent of African Americans vote for the Democratic Party today because of that equal rights. So back to this. The WPA became the biggest alphabet agency, the biggest spender, the biggest employer of them all. And they hired the musicians, artists, the 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 when you get the you get a thing that makes months anyway. Three little letters that make life okay. The PA. Under the WPA, so many people found jobs. And I think that we can never play down the importance of the WPA. Without it, there have been many who would have simply lost some of their skills in their town. I like the idea that uh, as we look at it today, so many programs that got started then through but WPA workers laid the foundation for a better future. Well, after six years being out in the street, I guess, and looking down on Wall Street, it's pretty good getting a job. My wife told me, where you going 12 o'clock? I said, I got to get on that line and get a ticket. And here I am. So if you see me, I'm not lying. WPA workers built 651,000 miles of public roads, more than 125,000 buildings, more than 8,000 parks. The agency funded hot lunches for children of the poor daycare for working mothers, and provided federal support for the arts, paying writers, musicians, actors, painters to perform, teach, and create art across America. To the role of the administration, man went to work, he began to get a recognition of himself, he began to feel better inwardly. He could walk up, he wasn't stooped. Before he was stooped down, he walked around and really depressed. And Roosevelt gave these guys a new set of hopes, and that kind of changed the ball game a bit. By 1936, New York City was receiving one-seventh of the WPA budget for the entire nation. Roosevelt said about LaGuardia, he comes to Washington and tells me a sad story. The tears run down his cheeks, and the first thing I know, he has wangled another $50 million out of me. And we shall continue okay. on our onward march of progress to make this a better and a happier city. <laughs> the mayor and Robert Moses continued to modernize New York. The West Side Highway would make it possible to drive nonstop from one end of Manhattan to the other. The Guardi Airport would become the busiest in the world, handling 200 flights a day. Schools, parks, 10,000 new public housing units, all part of a massive building campaign, made New York a leader in the new federal partnership with America's cities. Now, we have one more little bit I want to show you. On July 11, 1936, with Mayor LaGuardia and Robert Moses. ...to the need for slums, just as they're acquiring and demanding Triborough Bridges in the place among the nation's monuments to progress. The Triborough Bridge, $60,300,000 highway link, awaits its dedication by President Roosevelt. Yes, people require and people are demanding 
up-to-date government in place of antiquated government. Just as they're requiring and demanding Triborough bridges in the place of the ancient ferries. <laughs> government itself cannot close its eyes to the pollution of water, to the erosion of soil, to the slashing of forests, any more than it can close its eyes to the need for slum clearance and schools and bridges. May the Triborough Bridge, in the years to come, justify our efforts and our hopes by truly serving the city, the state, and the nation. So I did that for the Triborough Bridge. I want to show that and talk about But this is everywhere. Our courthouse here in Helena, WPA. Most of the dams in the state, WPA. Canyon Bears, WPA. Well, thank you. So that's electricity right there. All the dams on the Columbia, WPA, including the Grand Coulee Dam. Oh, so many roads and bridges. Unfortunately, we haven't put enough money in it. Now about two-thirds of the bridges are crumbling which is scary. And I was just talking to my, well, talking to my mom, who was talking to her brother, who lives in just north of Omaha, and you're about the flooding in Nebraska. He's, he's basically cut off and now on an island where his home is. And they're okay, but still, that's scary. And one and two of the bridges that go near her home have both washed out, both of them were old WPA bridges. Because they were great bridges for the time, but it's been a long time. We've got to start redoing that, but we're not. And so let's go ahead then and I'm always scared about seeing what's going to be chosen because you never know it might be something uh, obscene. It doesn't really look good, right? Does it? Let's not look. Maybe that's not a good idea. So, well, most of them, yeah. Not all, like Brooklyn Bridge, that goes back, back to the 1870s. But, like Golden Gate, WPA. Hoover Dam would be WPA. Yes, Republicans would come back and change the name to Hoover as a slap in the face of Roosevelt, but whatever. You know, I just think it's kind of funny. But big program. It probably wasn't big enough, but unemployment did finally drop below 10%. And so this was real action. And so Roosevelt 19. So a few things about this. First off, it looked like the Depression was over, but you take the second New Deal. You take, I'm jumping the gun here, sorry. But you take the second New Deal and the success of that, and even the economy was so bad, it seemed so much better than when Roosevelt took office, that in 1936, Roosevelt has a clear advantage. So let's get to the election of 36. Okay, 32, Roosevelt won partially just because people wanted Hoover and the Republicans out. But now, they're gonna run on their programs. Did I forget the Widener Act? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Partially the election of 1930 was so important because of the Widener Act. <laughs> Sorry about that. The last part of the second, I believe I said that. This one of the problem when you, uh, like I told you, I'm, I'm, I should be retired now. <laughs> so, the Widener Act would allow for the creation of labor unions to allow unions to negotiate. Basically what it meant is companies had to recognize a union if over half of the workers uh, voted for you. And so that allowed them the unions to have collective bargaining. And it also said that companies can be investigated and even, and even fined if they do activities to try to keep away unions like firing workers or blacklists or yellow dog contracts or things like that. And so the Wagner Act will allow for the creation of unions Especially, or especially in industrial unions. The largest industrial union at that time would be in create, the created the CIO, the Congress of Industrial Organizations, meaning a labor union for all workers, sort of like John L. Lewis. Now, that's all I'm going to mention for the test, but after the test, I have to show you just a little video clip, but I don't have time to show you today. So. This goes against conservative economics, and you can imagine how the very wealthy hated labor unions. But eventually, by the end of World War II, nearly 40% of all workers would be in a union. And this would dramatically increase wages. Dramatically increase wages. The big reason to increase wages is not only unions would negotiate higher wages, but companies who didn't want a union would have to give their workers higher benefits and 
and wages to keep the union out. So if unions are strong, that wage raises wages of people who outside the union. And also benefits like health insurance. We have a very convoluted healthcare system, so we might know that. And without a lot for health insurance, but crazy things like sick leave and vacation, those would be because of unions. Weekends, too, because of unions. And the unions get weaker because in 1980, union membership it was about 35% in 1980, and now it's down to six. Yeah, union membership is really low, and so what that means is that's downward pressure on wages for most people. Profits go up, wages go down. But there is a problem with unions, and we get big and top heavy, but a big act. So union members are now politically strong. And who are they going to vote for in the election of 36? You ought to say way back. Wasn't that creating? You impressed? Who? FDR. And now the Democrats could run on the New Deal. Alf Landon of Kansas would be the nominee for the Republicans. Landon. Let me rewrite that. Alf Landon. But it wasn't even close. And perhaps the biggest landslide. Oh, no, I'm sorry. In the biggest landslide election in history up to that time, FDR won a stunning victory. Landon lost his home stage. This was a <laughs> stunning victory. Nobody ever won a bigger victory than him. Only a couple elections are bigger. LBJ won bigger in 64. Nixon won bigger in 72. Reagan in 1984 was pretty close, but most elections are much closer. This was a 20 percentage point win. Unheard of. LBJ would win by more. And so, FDR won this massive victory. Democrats swept control of state houses, the U.S. House, governorships. Montana, almost the entire legislature were Democrats, which seems so odd today. But that was a big victory for that liberal economic policy, and FDR thought he could do anything. Right? If you won an election like that, wouldn't you think you could do anything? And so he screwed up. And destroy his political capital, so to speak. What he did was this. He was upset and worried about the Supreme Court. So we're coming to something called court packing. And court packing was this. The Supreme Court found two laws, the AW and the NRA, unconstitutional. He found them unconstitutional, the Supreme Court did. And Roosevelt's thinking, gosh, what if those, there's four really conservative justices, they call the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and a couple of moderate ones, and they thought, what if they now find Social Security unconstitutional, the Wagner Act unconstitutional, or any other laws? So what Roosevelt said is, let's expand the Supreme Court from nine to up to 15. There's actually some talk in some circles about packing or increasing the membership now. Because it's not constitutional. The, the, the Congress decides how many members of the Supreme Court. But Roosevelt would appoint them then. And people said no. They told him, this is, you're going too far. You look like you're trying to create a dictatorship and get a court that's like a rubber stamp court. This is what kings do. Dictators. A lot of conservative Southern Democrats, are. they vote along. They voted along with Roosevelt because they were scared of him. You'll lose them over court time. But he thought he could do no wrong, and guess what happened? His first major defeat. And Southern conservative Democrats joined Republicans to stop it. And with that, Roosevelt's aura of invincibility ended. Ironically, the Supreme Court would be kind of cowed by this, and they would find Social Security the White Act constitutional. But the next big thing, and this is something you don't want named after you. The Roosevelt Recession. Roosevelt, with the WPA, WPA being so successful by 37, thought we can cut the WPA. He decided to cut spending by, and balance the budget. Balance the budget means balance the budget means no deficit. By cutting the WPA. They cut it by almost half. Roosevelt was warned. You cut the WPA, demand will rob the economy, cause another recession. He proposed this. 
liberal Democrats, liberal economic Democrats, voted against Roosevelt, were mad. His support came from Republicans and conservative Democrats, which tells you what a mistake it was for him because he's having his opponents vote with him. It passed, and what happened to the economy? Unemployment went up by almost 80%, from 10% to 18%. 18 or 80. 80% increases of 8%. Oh, yeah. I don't I know the percent. So up to 18%, which is almost double. How about that? And the the um, come, the economy crashed. And Roosevelt realized, what the heck am I doing? And he proposed more than doubling the WPA. But the damage was done. He had plans for a third new deal. A third new deal. And these were pretty ambitious. Some of these things haven't happened to this day. He wanted to end Jim Crow laws, civil rights. He wanted education reform, especially a massive aid for poor school districts and a free college tuition for public schools. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Huh? And, and national health care insurance. He wanted all those things. His wife was also pushing it for women's rights, but he, yeah, not didn't happen, right? No, that would happen. And for the most part, that only partially has happened now. Yeah. So, did like people in this time period when he became invincible, did a lot of those like calling him like a socialist and stuff? Like, did that like grow? Yeah, when he, when he lost his invincibility, yeah, then they kind of they felt a little more emboldened. See, he's just like any other dictator. He wants to do that. But you know, you, everyone gets hubris, you know. The second AAA would be one of the last two major actions. This would provide loans to prop up farm prices. And the other one is the Fair Labor Standards Act. The Fair Labor Standards Act, a lot of you know this. The Fair Labor Standards Act, the Fair Labor Standards Act, which would pass the Supreme Court. All of you know this, I bet anything. Minimum wage, instead of a minimum wage. By interstate commerce, passed the Supreme Court. 40 hour work week. By the way, how do they enforce a 40 hour work week? They do. They do. It's called overtime. Your overtime pay? That's the Fair Labor Standards Act. So you pay anybody who works over 40 hours, time and a half, to discourage um, forcing people to work over 40 hours so you hire more workers. That's where overtime pay comes from. And child labor. Like that child labor at 16. And more conservative administrations want to get rid of this. I mean, when President Trump first went into office, he tried to get rid of the Fair Labor Standards Act. I would have liked to. Talked about it. Probably is going to happen. If he wins a second term, I would bet. So, I think this 10 year old should be out there working this. So, with that, one more last thing. The last thing Roosevelt was reluctant to fully adopt liberal economics. And liberal economics, would be the opposite of Keynesian. There's an economist by the name of John Maynard Keynes. I know it looks like Keynes, but he's English. So it's pronounced Keynes. Like if you go to the, I just, the English language is weird in so many different ways. But Keynes actually wrote him a letter when he was talking about cutting this and said, don't do it. It's still too unstable, demand will fall. If demand falls, it'll be that same problem of debt deflation. Lowing demand will just spiral out of control. Don't do it. Well, Roosevelt would listen by then, but or listen, but it was kind of too late for him politically. And Keynes was writing on his book on economic theory, would develop a whole idea of liberal economic that we call at an IN Keynesian. That is liberal economics. So let me quick chart it for you. You want to see the chart? So remember, conservative, conservative economics went from Wealthy down. Can you guess what this is going to do? Bottom up. But on the bottom, we're talking now the bottom 95% workers. Workers on the bottom. And what? Oh, I almost forgot some of the Keynes here. Sorry. In bad times, like during a, a depression, deficit spending. Deficit spending, borrow money, deficit spending, the heck with the budget. Spend, 
In good times, raise taxes if you need to control the debt. In bad times, if government pulls money out, to a, that's supposed to be deficit, even though it doesn't look like debt, it's Detroit. Yeah. Detroit, doesn't it? Is that better? And in good times, raise taxes to control the deficit. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the opposite of trickle down. Yeah, the opposite. Well, I mean, there's various similarities because both trickle down and Keynesian are different ways to uh, for capitalism. They're both capitalistic. So workers, you get money in their hand through government action. Now, when I say the government action, that's supposed to be government. I'm just going to put down some New Deal things to say. Roosevelt did this partially, just not as much as Keynes would have said. He said, spend more, spend more. But let me give you some ideas. So think about all those things that the government did that would try to put more money in people's hands. For example, antitrust. All those regulations put money in their hands. Banking regulation, too, but the regulations. Antitrust, you know, like the SEC, Glass-Steagall. There goes the lid. Just imagine I wrote that there. I shouldn't have done that. Next, the Wagner Act. Labor unions. The Wagner Act created labor unions. That's more money in workers' hands. Next, Social Security. Social Security not only provided an old age pension, which dramatically uh, increased the, the hope and the future of workers so they would spend more, but also unemployment insurance. The WPA, by providing those jobs, it created demand. And that includes like, the CCT, the TBA, but I'll use the biggest one, the WPA. Also, taxes. Those progressive income taxes worked really well to equalize income, but also did this. It raised wages. And there are more. Oh, I forgot one more. Use the Federal Reserve to raise and lower interest rates. So, what does this create? If workers have money, what do they what does it create? Demand. Hey, if people don't have money and you give them money all of a sudden, what do they do with it? Right away. If you already have money, you're given more, are you going to spend it right away? You don't have to. If companies start realizing, hey, people are buying stuff, they'll increase production, a.k.a. supply. Does that make sense? They'll start producing more. When they start producing more, they need what? And do you see the engine of economic growth? More workers with more money and demand. And some of these programs will begin to be reduced as we get out of the depression. A couple of things we got to talk about really quick. First off, there is a problem with debt. Debt will go up, but that's when you raise taxes when times are good. The politicians have the guts. And one more big thing that comes out of this, inflation. There is inflation. But if government raised taxes or the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, that will control that. And this would give unprecedented economic growth. There were flaws with it, without a doubt, but the United States was Keynesian from 1935, I'm sorry, 1938 to 1980. Keynesian economics. And this period was called the Great Compression. Why was it called the Great Compression? The only time in history, I know the bell rang, the wealth gap shrunk. The gap between the rich and the poor dropped. That had never happened in history. And that's one of the greatest legacies of the New Deal, a growing middle class. What's the wealth gap doing today? Ever. Fastest rate ever. Yeah. Um, so why don't we, like, 1980, what happened? You know, when we get to the Bible, the AP example, we'll be talking about that. But a couple, you know, we had mass inflation, oil prices went up 400%. And so all these things, people got insecure, but there's been a movement for a really long time to go back. You know, the very wealthy ones go back to conservative economics. Oh, exactly. That's exactly. And 
this is the one other thing that happened is you have all the years of prosperity that people begin to think of go on forever. And they kind of forgot about what happened when the Great Depression. You know, why it happened. So far, I don't Yeah, there's an issue with that, yeah. We we're talking about stagflation, but that was a. But part of that was they, they didn't. Part of what made stagflation so bad was, was they, they used to measure inflation at a rate that was all messed up. Way messed up. Question? Answer? Test tomorrow! Now, even I know I'm cool. I admit I'm cool. But I did not write out the film. I did. I know. I didn't write it. Someone beat you to the punch. Huh? Someone beat you to the punch. Paul McCartney. Oh, I said John, but you guys, and that's just my rap you've got a whole thing about government doing more. Okay, I know you're just trying to do something. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's it. I have that. And it's just one in the south. It's the one that was. I need to go. There's a psychic. I'm psychic. I'm literally psychic. He wanted. Oh, he thought he was going to be the Yeah, he was going to be the Jewish. Yeah, he was going to be the Jewish. Yeah, he was going Okay. You know, because I just put some questions about how to get the And there's the, the, the reflection there. Oh, forget about the US. I was going to ask that. It's weird that you still want to ask, so I thought it was something that's right. Okay. So I, I just I don't want to confuse you that. So thank you for reminding me. I forgot to say something. So I mean, this <laughs> 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 And you look slick and aerodynamic. Yeah, exactly. I, I dropped some weight. I